cool there. You can get three different types of food there. You can get Indian food, you can get Chinese food, and you can also get Malay food. Same as the people. There's Malaysian people, there's Chinese people, and there's of course Indian people too. I love Malaysia. People there are so nice. They really stick to the rules for the street signs and the orders. Like, the traffic there is way less than in, in Indonesia. Over there, people really stick to the rules of the traffic. We just passed the Laos border. Well, it was a pretty interesting experience. Thai side, they were very friendly, very easy. Once we got there, it only took us about 15 minutes to get through. We managed to stamp Cappuccino's passport, did all the paperwork, stamped out passports, and we were out. On the Laos side, it was a little bit different, because I think you've never seen uh, another car, except from probably Thai cars coming into the country. But they managed to do Cappuccino's paperwork, they managed to do Yel's passport and my passport, and then when we gave them the kids' passports, Indonesian passports, because for Asian countries, uh, the passport holders don't have to pay for visa, they just are visa-free entrance into the Asian countries, like Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, they don't have to pay for visa. So we just switched their passports, and they just couldn't get it, they didn't look really understand that and they said it's impossible because the stamp from the country you come from so from Thailand should be in the same passport as the stamp from the entrance into Laos while in other countries you just put the two passports together as long as they are together it's proof that you exited the other country and you entered this country so here they're not used to that they didn't really understand is that it's impossible so instead of spending three hours at the border we gave up and we just paid for fees on the ride for $35 per person with our little drone, our Sparky. Sparky cool. And looked like it turned out pretty good. Wow. I think. And after that the, the, the road was turning and twisting oh, through, through, through the hills. It's very exciting. Uh, but after a while the road was getting pretty bad. Lots of bumps and holes. But it keeps you awake and I enjoy it. Oh, but it's getting night now, it's already 8 o'clock and the people here looks like they go to bed early and this 
need hardly anybody selling food. Yo, can here. you please quiet, yo? And there's hardly anybody selling food. But it's okay, so we just decided to buy some rice and we stopped at a small house where it was not clear whether the people were selling stuff or they were just. No, I think small water, water. And some dandang and some other stuff with us. So we're gonna look for a place for a little picnic, maybe a little standing picnic for 10 15 minutes before we continue to Luang Prabang because. I asked the guy how far it is and he said it's at least three hours. So they come here, Prasop is normally here, he's not here right now, and he gives an educational speech that will address what the situation of the elephants in Asia in general, what the situation in Laos, which is in a very critical situation, there's only 1,000 elephants left, and we're losing 4% every year. That means 40 elephants disappear every year, and that means 25 years. There's because many reasons, natural, a lot of trafficking up to China. Um, there is still conflict between the wild elephants and the communities around the national parks. Mm -hmm. So then everything here starts with education. Every, every guest that comes, every group that comes, receive an educational speech um, about what we believe um, the elephants in every, like domestic elephants should go and how do we kind of um, That's okay. What what are the steps that we can do towards help the whole species um, in Laos? Um, so then every tour how it works, people arrive here, they have their educational speech. While that's happening, the elephants are coming from the jungle where they sleep, and then you basically cross the river, you meet the elephants, you give them some bananas and you basically walk them back into the jungle where they sleep. The elephants here don't do loops, they only go once a day, they come down to the river and then they slowly make their way back to, to, to the jungle. Laos was called Langsang, which means the land of the million elephants, and now there's only a thousand left. Um, and I agree with you, we only have to start with young people to educate them so that us they get to know and understand elephants, they will then protect them in the future.
people here when we call them and we have to be always towards the front of the elephant because the elephant cannot see very good to the back because they have a big belly so um, just stay away from the back because also they have a tail and they use the tail to um, make the mosquitoes go away but if the tail hits you it's gonna hurt so let's try to stay away from the back of the elephants also if they cannot see maybe they will put their legs out um, and the way we're gonna feed the elephant we're gonna have bananas and put it out like this and the elephant will just come and get it like this. okay So this is a stump that we use for positive reinforcement. Uh, so if they get some injury on the legs, we need to make sure that the elephants are okay, that they touch the legs. So we do positive reinforcement, which is basically giving them a treat every time they do something we want. Um, and we're training for them to put their legs up so that if they if we ever need to make sure one of the nails is okay or they have a small injury uh, they are okay putting their leg up and having people going around their legs uh, so um, they feel comfortable with it exactly. um, same to put their banana up so that they lift their trunk so we can check the, the, their teeth So the Asian elephant only has one finger at the end of the trunk, which is this one that you will see right here. This one. Okay. The African elephant has actually two. Okay. But the African one is bigger, right? Much bigger. Yeah. And the way to know also is in the African elephant, the highest part of the elephant are the ears. The Asian elephant ears are much smaller. You can also touch them. They are very gentle. Mm -hmm. So, so this is the experience that the tourists have in their first encounter. They just give food and then they walk the elephants back to the jungle. So um, these are our last two elephants before they go back to the jungle. So they make three kinds of noises. The trumpet, which is the one we always hear. But they also make a noise that is similar to when a cat goes brrr. Like a purr. Like a purr mm. and it comes right from here. Oh. And the other noise they make is like when they kiss. They ah. <laughs> so elephants cannot sweat. They don't have... Uh, so the way to make themselves cool is by flapping the ears. So one of the reasons why riding is not so good is because if in order to have a chair, you have to put something to protect the elephant. So on that, it's very hard to ride there in the back. So, and if you have people on top, they cannot, you, as you can see, look at this, what do you think this is? It's called sunblock. Oh. <laughs> sunblock and mosquito re repellent. They always put mud on top. Elephants and humans live the same. Oh. Yeah, and their 
uh, development is very similar. So our two and a half year old baby boy is like a two and a half year old boy. Thank you.